Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us. Great to have you with us on the program today. John Brewer, a frequent guest on This Week in America, is a professor of biochemistry and molecular biology at the University of Georgia, where he's been a faculty member for nearly 50 years. He has over 100 professional scientific publications. His wife, Mary Sue, has contributed to or created nearly all of the covers of his books, including his newest we'll be talking about in the program, Golden Mary. This is John's sixth book, and he's back with us on This Week in America. John, welcome back to the program. It is great to have you back with us on the show. Thank you. Thank you. It is always fun to read the books. They are excellent historical romance novels, and we're going back to 1536, that era, to, to talk about the uh, uh, the new book, Golden Mary. Set it up for us. What happens back in 1536? You've got some some really, as always, some really interesting characters involved in, in the storyline. Um, well, you can define the... Uh, junction between medieval times and modern er, times, early modern times in a lot of ways. But in England, uh, 1536 was when Henry VIII decided to close the monasteries, and that could be taken as a good ending to medieval times and the beginning of early modern times. And as you so, mentioned, as we see in the story, that really created opportunities for people with money, including the uh, the main family you talk about in the program. This is a chance for some people to uh, to capitalize on the situation. Indeed, indeed. Though I should say that, uh, in actual historical fact, uh, most of these lands that were made available were snapped up by the landed gentry already. But but some people who had money who were outside the landed gentry, like the uh, fictional Easterlings, were able to cash in on this. Let's talk about the Easterlings. Here's a, a family that's really trying to be opportun- opportunistic. Uh, talk about what they did in society and how they went about trying to, to play basically both ends here to try to, to come up with some riches. Uh, they're goldsmiths. Uh, it's a lucrative trade. Uh, goldsmiths in London. And uh, in addition, uh, the elder Easterling uh, would uh, invest in uh, what is called ventures, you know, ship, sending ships of uh, wool out and bringing shiploads of wine back in uh, to make money. Uh, that's how the uh, families became connected because the father of Henry Barrowby, the uh, hero, was in Parliament at that time, and he met Easterling, and that's where the initial connection was made. And then Mary, Golden Mary is the name of the book, and Gold, and Mary, the uh, main character in the book. Talk about uh, Mary. She's a very interesting character, isn't she? Very intelligent lady. Yes, um, and she's looking for a husband, uh, especially since she's being pursued by this... Uh, low-life uh, aristocrat, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that she doesn't like, and she meets Henry, and Henry's on the rebound, and uh, she finds him suitable, and things develop. Yeah, there's uh, this conflict that develops in the book Golden Mary, and you talk about the uh, the other potential suitor here, uh, Lord Lavenham. Explain exactly who he is in the relationship with uh, Henry Barrowby. Well, he's uh, at court. He's a courtier, uh, meaning he's trying to uh, make uh, money uh, through opportunities at court, uh, which many people did. That was where ambitious people went to try to uh, find things, good things, uh, get good jobs, uh, estates, things like that, that were in the gift of uh, the king at the time, Henry VIII. We're talking about the new book, Golden Mary by John Brewer. All the information is available at uh, John's website, which which is historomance.com. That's H-I-S-T-O romance.com. Books available at uh, Amazon, all the usual online places in a number of forms. And you can go directly to John's website by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Uh, a number of books written by John. You'll, John, you'll find all the information at his website. And again, continuing and just touching on the story, I don't want to give away too much, but in touching the story, Henry and Mary fall in love, but 
Lavenham is really upset with that. What? And he'll basically stop at nothing to try to break up this this romance, this relationship. Uh, yes, he's uh, <clears throat> not a happy camper, and uh, uh, he doesn't think warning uh, Henry Barrowby off uh, will do. So he tries to have him ambushed, and then tries to have him captured and locked in a box to be pushed in the Thames River. Uh, th- things like that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, as I said, uh, rather nasty sort. Uh, yes, yes. And as Henry and Mary, I say they fall in love. They're they're planning a wedding, and even as they're planning the the wedding, the, the uh, Levenham, Levenham, he doesn't. The Lord doesn't really get it yet at, at that point, does he? He's still trying to stay in there and win her affection. Well, he's trying to get her as a wife uh, affection he wants her dowry i mean <laughs> yeah as soon as i said affection i thought that was a little bit too strong that's that's not really the game that he was in was getting her affection yeah getting her uh, uh bankroll her dowry and you'll uh, follow all of the story in the book golden mary Again, the characters are so well fleshed out. We we almost see them unfolding on the pages as as we're reading. Talk about the development of these characters. Is this something that you sort of, the characters would be developed as you went in the story, or did you pretty well have them laid out as you actually began the, the writing process? Um, to some extent, the writing uh, takes over itself. Uh, the the uh, uh, idea for the whole story uh, came when I was watching television. They had a, a special on Hampton Court Palace, which is where Henry VIII was living. And one of the scenes showed this uh, actress who was uh, portraying Anne Boleyn uh, dancing. And the wheels started turning. And uh, this doesn't play a major part in the story, but it just came from that. Um, as I visage, envisage uh, Henry, uh, as the book says, he's a little immature. Um, and uh, he tends to grow up uh, because of the ordeals he has to go through. Uh, yeah, and abduction and swordplay will get you to uh, rapid maturity as, as you go through that and you follow Assuming all of that. Assuming you win it. Assuming you win the sword fights, yes. That, that, yes, yeah. so and we won't say any more. The, the book is called Golden Mary. It's uh, the latest from, from John Brewer. I mentioned that written over 100 professional scientific publications. You've uh, spent uh, a number of years teaching biochemistry, molecular biology, as I mentioned when and you've always read you've always read historical books from a child on talk about when you decided okay i've met the goals professionally following in in chemistry the career that i've chosen i'd like to start writing some books now i'd like to maybe put all of this knowledge i've got all of these ideas that have been uh, you know, i've been kicking around for a number of years really start writing how did that process happen for you when you decided, I'm sure that, I don't want to say they're easier now, but you've, you've, you've started the process. You know how it works. How difficult was it that first one to like actually do it? Um, I don't know. No harder or uh, more difficult than it is now. Um, uh, I write for a while and let things uh, germinate or fester or ferment in my head and then write some more and so forth. But I was getting on. Uh, I had turned 71, which is retirement age, and uh, my health is okay, but uh, the doctor uh, I was seeing uh, suggested that uh, if I had any uh, dreams or plans, he was talking about travel, that maybe I ought to do this. Uh, but I hate travel. I traveled all over the place when I was a kid, and uh, I just want to stay in one place, and that's what I've done. Uh, and tra- so, traveling, you sort of do in your imagination, don't you? That That sort of takes the place of like hopping on an airplane and going somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, um, 
And you mentioned travel, Kansas, Oklahoma, California, Alaska, Alberta, Canada, places you lived as a child. How has that influenced you? And we've talked before about that period. You were shy as as a youngster and sort of the imagination sort of uh, carried you from one town to the other. Talk about that, even go, going back now and thinking of that childhood and how it made you who you are today as a writer. It threw me into myself more and more. So I was, I, I was very shy and awkward. I, I still am to, that, to, to this day. Uh, uh, my wife says that uh, reading is my uh, vocation and daydreaming is my vice. And <laughs> that sums it up. John Brewer, our guest on This Week in America. The new book is called Golden Mary. His website is historomance.com, H-I-S-T-O romance.com. Books available at uh, Amazon, other places. You can also get all the information, link on directly to John's website and read about the books by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Other books are Matthew Dobbs, Esquire, Millwood Village, LLC, Pilgrim's Journey, Chirps of Core, Good Man's Crop. We've had the opportunity to have John on to talk about uh, to talk about most of those books. And, and you've got another one you're working on now called Lost Tribe. Talk about, because this is a whole different era we're talking about now. Talk about uh, a little bit what you can tell us about uh, what we're going to find in Lost Tribe. I've decided to change the name because I looked up uh, Lost Tribe on the web and there are uh, maybe a dozen oh, wow. Lost Tribes in book chapters, uh, novelettes, uh, novels. Uh, so I'm thinking of calling it uh, Quests, but I'll, I'll keep looking. Golden Mary was originally the goldsmith's daughter, but my wife looked that up on the web and found five or six novels with that same exact title. So finally I tried Golden Mary and she looked that up and the only thing she could find was a short story by Charles Dickens named... Uh, titled The Wreck of the Golden Mary, and I figured I, I could get away with that. That, yes, yes. So Golden Mary, it was. And you, and you mentioned your wife. Talk about the influence that she has had on uh, on your writing and certainly on uh, on the covers. And the first thing we see with a book uh, is the cover. Whether you see the book in a bookstore or you're looking for it online, there is the book cover. And I see so many book covers that sort of like an afterthought. In fact, I get them in the mail all the time, and it's like, wow, the, my first impression as I'm opening this up is not necessarily a positive one. I, 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 this is sort of the calling card. It's like their elevator speech when I, when I look at that. The covers on your books really come out and grab you. Talk about the influence of your wife on the, on the writing career. She is the artist. Uh, she comes up with the ideas for the, uh, the uh, cover. The first one, uh, we had a commercial artist do, and uh, I mean, I mean, it's it's a, it's okay. It's an interesting cover. I I, I like it. Uh, but then she uh, did the second one. The third one was kind of a compromise uh, with the publishing company, and nobody liked that. Uh, she subsequently made a new cover, uh, a different one. Uh, so that's the one that's now in publish. And she did uh, Good Man's Croft. Uh, that bird is supposed to be a uh, red kite, a uh, carnivorous bird found in England uh, coming in to... Uh, uh, grab the viewer. Uh, and the fifth one, she thought of uh, using uh, profiles. Sixth one, uh, she did that too. Uh, she has comments on the uh, writing, most of which I adopt, but not always. Uh, 
This is the occasion for lively discussion, shall we say? <laughs> well, that's nice that you can share creatively like that and uh, and maybe take that input and uh, and go with it. You can, you can see the book covers, everything is uh, at John's website, historomance.com. And you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Talk about going back because you've done a number of, of, of different time frames with the books that you have, you have written. 1536 is the basis for Golden Mary. Uh, the new book, uh, Lost Tribe, now possibly called Quest, takes place uh, uh, what, around 1900. Talk no, about... no, it takes place current days. Uh, the basic incident uh, that uh, prompted it was uh, uh, occurred in 1900. That, okay, okay. Uh, a skull were, that was found uh, back then, yes. Some people were digging... Uh, dust and bat guano out of a cave near Lovelock, Nevada, and about four feet down, they found bodies, 40 or 50 bodies. And the Paiutes uh, had a legend that uh, some people showed up. They had, they were tall. One of them was a giant. They had blue eyes and red hair, and they were cannibals. And, uh, so the Paiutes chased them into the cave and then set fire at the mouth of the cave, sucked the oxygen out, and asphyxiated them. And so, I mean, I saw that and I said, by golly. Because if they were uh, tall, red-haired, blue-eyed, they obviously didn't come from Native American tribes, they came from somewhere, and if they were that far back in time, where did they come from? And we will find out in the new book. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I, in setting it up, it's like, okay, I, I need to read this one as well. The, the most current is, is Golden Mary. A couple of minutes left in the show. Let's talk about the, the research that you do. When you go back and you try, and you're creating these are basically fictional characters that you're creating, uh, but set in in a uh, historical faction effect, uh, era era that that that's true environment that's true is what I'm trying to say. Talk about the research and going in and how much you you spend to make sure that that you are accurate or reasonably close to being accurate. Well, I read a lot of books. Um, I try to get the. Uh, I try to get the speech uh, fairly accurate without uh, making it uh, hard to understand. So I take some liberties with that. Uh, uh, but older uh, people in the uh, book uh, speak uh, uh, an older style of speech, but that's okay. Uh, no, I, I have a great many books. I have shelves and shelves of them, and I read them. Uh, uh, see how people spoke, uh, how they dressed. I have a book on uh, fighting, martial arts in the Middle Ages, and I got some of it from there. Uh, some of the uh, uh, scenes uh, involve a school for teaching what we would consider all-in or uh, commando-type fighting, and uh, that was taught in that in that day and age. It has uh, to be interesting as you go back and you do the research in, in putting the books together. A couple of minutes left. I, I want to ask you about your influences. We talked about. Uh, reading a lot historic uh, novels, historic uh, books at, at an early age. Who were some of the people that influenced you uh, in your interest in history and your interest in, in, in writing? My interest in history was always there. It was an escape. And still is. Uh, it's uh, interesting. So uh, you can lose yourself in a historical book and... Enjoy where you are. Well, I was especially fascinated by the First World War because, uh, and three of the novels that I've written take place during that, yes. uh, because it was so dreadful, uh, so ghastly, uh, that it somehow that made it 
romantic, b believe it or not. And uh, people would serve, then they'd go home on leave, and the contrast between living in a, uh, a charnel house, a graveyard, uh, with the danger, real danger of death every minute, uh, and then going back home to uh, a civilized life was uh, uh, quite, quite attention getting. Uh, well, and, and the, so many people never came back from that conflict. And you do get that feeling. I've had the opportunity in reading with John Big on the program the books that he's talking about, and you do get a sense for like, wow, those were those were difficult times. The other books are Matthew Dobbs Esquire. Millwood Village LLC, Pilgrim's Journey, Terpsichor, Good Man's Croft, and the newest is Golden Mary. That's what we've been talking about in the program. The book is available uh, at the usual places, information at Amazon, at John's website, historomance.com. And, of course, you can link on directly to John's website by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Working on uh, the newest book, still debating on the title, I understand. And when do you think that'll be available? I have a first draft. It's a little short. I have to flesh it out some, but it's 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 written basically. Uh, as I said, details like the title. <laughs> Once you like nail that. down it's it's it, the title, it's downhill from there. And we'll stay in touch with John and uh, have a chance to uh, to have him back on the program to talk about that again. The newest book is called Golden Mary. John, you did it again. It's a really fascinating book, historical romance novel. You've got all the elements there. Uh, the reviews have been excellent on the book. It's called Golden Mary. Thank you for being back with us on the program. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. The book is Golden Mary, John's website, and the author is John Brewer. His website is historomance.com. And, of course, uh, you get all the information. Link on directly at our website, thisweekinamerica.us.